As an architecture designer, my two favorite apps that I use constantly on iPad are Procreate and Morfolio Trace. Procreate for my illustrative sketching and Trace for more technical design. I have many videos showing you my Procreate process behind drawings that I use for client presentations, city reviews, and marketing materials, but not enough what I use Morfolio Trace for. By the way, if you are interested in seeing my Procreate workflow in depth, I have a three-part workshop that you can sign up in the description below. But in this video, I'm gonna share with you two ways that I use Morfolio Trace in my everyday practice, both in construction and design. Quick break, I wanna take a quick second to share an announcement. On this Black Friday, I will be opening up my iPads for Architects Masterclass for four days starting on November 25th. I teach this class live once a year. If you missed it earlier this year, now is another opportunity to get in. You have access to everything when I taught the course live, plus all recordings that you can watch at your own pace. My course only goes on sale publicly once a year, so if you are interested, make sure you mark it on your calendar and head over to my website on November 25th. So for site visits, gone on the days where you need to bring a roll of drawing sets, specification binders, drawing utensils, and even camera equipment. Everything that I need for a typical construction site visit can all be accommodated with just my iPad and Apple Pencil. The way I'm able to do this is with Dropbox. We use Dropbox in our office to store all project files and documents online. So if anything happened to our computer or server, everything can be retrieved on cloud anytime, anywhere. Now, this can be a lot of files and space for iPad to store internally. So we only sync what we need for construction. And these would be drawing PDFs, specifications, uh, presentation files, which actually doesn't take up that much space. Anything else that takes up a lot of space like 3D files, non-essential folders would be excluded from the iPad so that they don't take any internal hard drive space. In Dropbox, you can specify which folder you want a local copy of. So even without internet connection, you can still open and browse through these files. Now, as good practice, every time before I leave for a site visit, I will turn on my iPad and make sure all the latest files are synced before I leave home with Wi-Fi. Now, if you have a version of the iPad with cellular service where there is Wi-Fi on the site, you can access any files you need when you arrive. But just to be safe, I like to make sure I have mine downloaded before I leave home in case there is no internet access. And once I'm on the site, even though I have all my files loaded on the iPad, I don't use Dropbox to read the files. And this is where Morfolio Trace comes in because this is the tool that allows me to redline, annotate, and sketch and measure in scale all within one app. So all I have to do is to export my Dropbox file to Trace first. And I found this to be incredibly convenient when I'm walking through the site, holding just my iPad and not carrying a bunch of things with me. Now, I will show you an example of how I annotate on the iPad. So here we are inside Morfolio Trace. You can see that I've got a number of projects that are put into their folder. So for this project, I've got a couple of PDFs already exported from Dropbox. If I am walking on a construction site, I would typically have this loaded before I go in. The, this, for example, is a drawing set. And if I tap on the thumbnail icon, this will show you all the different pages that are inside the set. If I'm walking around and looking at floor plans, what I would usually see is um, I will have a floor plan that's open and you can you know, click to enlarge and zoom to really get into the, the part where you want to see more details of. And on top of this base layer, that's where I would make a new layer. For example, as you see here, I will make a new layer to make any red lines or annotations as I'm walking through the site. And this layer could actually just be dated for that date. So you could either just um, make it a date like I do here just to help you remember. So you could be annotating and red line like, like this. And you can see as I turn on more layer, the layers below it will just get a little bit more opaque. And this is essentially like putting on different tracing paper over the original paper. So if that's not what you want, you can just turn the layer before that off. And this, you know, this trace, for example, would be a notes from a different site visits on a different day. You can see that this is another example of the red lines that were made during a electrical walkthrough. 
So you could design the building the way that you think should look on, on the computer, but the actual conditions will be a little different, especially if it's for existing building. So as you're walking through the site, you're going to be making a lot of changes potentially to the lighting layouts, to where things could have potentially moved during the design, during the construction as well. So you can see even in this lighting layouts, there were a number of different dates that were created for different things. So this is really, really useful, as I mentioned before, to be holding your iPad as you move through the site to be making these changes without you know, bringing a big flimsy trace paper or just drawing set at a half size where you're not able to zoom in to get really close to the places where you are making these kind of detailed notes. So if I go back to this gallery view, you also see that, you know, sometimes you may be making updates to a specific sheet and those sheet may not be incorporated back into the original drawing set. So hopefully this gives you an idea of how I use Morfolio Trace during a CA process. And it's just so helpful to be able to have this on hand, all digital preloaded and to be able to walk through a site with my Apple Pencil. Now you should have a pretty good idea of how this works with site visits. And let me know what you think of this workflow if you are interested in adopting. Next for design. As I mentioned in the beginning, I don't do any of my illustrative sketching on Morfolio Trace. I use Procreate for that. What I use Morfolio Trace for are plans, elevations, and sections. So basically anything that benefits from a higher level of accuracy because of the built-in super scale ruler, which can be accurate up to the inches if you need it to be. But I think most of the time, you don't want this kind of accuracy in a sketch, which would kind of defeat the purpose of a loose sketch. I think this app can really replace your need for a traditional sketchbook. So don't think of it as a tool to produce just finished drawings, but you can use it as a tool for ideation, brainstorming, and testing out designs just as easy as you would with physical paper. And I would even go as far to argue you can do way better on iPad too. So I'll show you three examples of this in the app. So in a design example, I want to show you exactly what I did with a floor plan to generate a couple of axometric options for a bathroom in this plan. So what I did was to actually cut out a part of the floor plan, enlarged it, put it on 45 degrees. And from there, I'm actually going to turn off this background layer. And from there, I'm able to build a 3D version of this simply by just extruding your lines upwards. And then the ruler actually has, you know, different degrees that you can have it just to put in that direction and you can draw lines parallel to that. So this is a very, very easy way to build an axiometric view in this sketch format. So as you see in here, I've done one option in this layout. I've done a different option in a different layout. It's a little hard to see. So I'm going to turn off the original layer and a third layout all based on this floor plan oriented in this direction. And to help you actually see things better, you can actually, you know, turn up or turn down your opacity so you can see a little bit of background if you need to for the presentation you know we just ended up showing these three different views in axiometric even without showing it in plan and i think this is a really good way for the client to visualize a design without spending a lot of time actually building this out in the 3d model what ended up happening was they, they, they went with one of the design. I think it was mostly based on this concept. And then we further refined it in the 3D model and then in CAD to get it to a level of construction, drawing detail and level. So it's a very cost-effective strategy for me, at least in my design process to be able to generate these kind of sketches very quickly and very effectively and incorporate that into the presentation with inspirational images that could potentially pair really well with sketches like this. So in the second example, what I want to show you is what I did using a PDF blocked out elevations. You can see if I zoom in on these elevations, there's really not a lot of information in these details. Most of them are sort of uh, blackouts for, for the design to go on top. And I would want you to think of this as if you're using a trace paper at first, you, you blocked out these elevation 
And now in Portfolio Trace, you can just create a new layer and do actually a lot of the design thinking part on this layer. So it's, it functions basically like a trace paper where you can do a lot of these things over and over again and with very high accuracy. And that's the thing I want to point out is you can do this very accurately on this platform as opposed to doing it all in with a scale ruler and with trace paper on top. It's just not going to be very accurate or as accurate as you do on here. So as you can see, these drawings are all done in half an inch and with the super scale ruler. And once the drawing is calibrated, you can effectively be drawing very accurately to the inches. So if I zoom in really close to this drawing with the super scale ruler, you can see where the one foot, two foot and three foot, four foot, five foot is. I want to show you one last example of what you can do in plan. And here we're also designing in plan with this using the super scale ruler. So this base layer is the as built drawing and gradually we can build information from this base layer. And this layer was really used to highlight and identify the areas of the design with a client. And as we move through our layers, we're starting with, you know, the bathroom sort of a layout in their master bathroom. And this is a different layout on top of that. So that's option number two and also option number three. So you can quickly do these different layouts on top of the original one by turning it on and off. And for the presentation, we can just easily export them out as JPEGs and lay them out in InDesign. So here we have the, the kitchen area. We're also doing some design exercises. So this was number one, version number two, and option number three. So when we are designing and iterating a portfolio trace, you know, you can create as many options as you want. So as I move through the layer in, you know, in the higher layers I go, these would be more refined floor plans. We've actually spent a little bit more time in refining from the previous iteration. I took what I like and what I didn't like, and I put it into a more refined drawing. So you can see in this one document, you could have different trace paper created for different areas of the house. Right now, this isn't ideal because they're all kind of overlaid on top of each other. But within this one PDF, you can zoom in and create different pages for just, you know, the bedroom area, for example, or the kitchen area, or for example, here, also a workshop area. And the beauty of this is they're all done individually on the layer that you want to work on. So they don't have to be combined into one trace paper for the presentation. Let's say you are done with sketching at this point. And this is really just a part of the overall floor plan localized in this area. What I do is simply export this as a PDF and at the pages, I will indicate the sizes and the scale factor that I want. So when I export this and airdrop it, or you can just save it to your Dropbox and whatnot, and when this goes on to your computer, you can effectively drop this into InDesign and that will go in there at the scale that you indicated. It's not my intent to tell you what you should be using for the trace or Procreate for. So I don't believe there is a right app or a all in one app for everyone out there. But I'm hoping to show you is what's possible on a digital platform. There's both good and bad, but I think the positive outweighs the negative. And hopefully this invites you to embrace these new tools in the future.